Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. And hi, Will. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how to stake your KSM for the Kusama auctions. So Will's going to dive into that. Do you want to introduce yourself a bit? Yeah. Um, so my name is Will. I work at Parity Technologies. Um, I have kind of like a funny title called Master of Validators, but I, I work on kind of just a lot of things external, a lot of like things in the ecosystem, um, people that run infrastructure, people working on parachains. Uh, it's a really exciting time right now just because uh, as of today, this uh, kind of second round of auctions starts on Kusama. And so, um, yeah, happy to be here and kind of uh, talk a little bit about kind of the process and some, some context, um, how to actually kind of do this and give some tutorials on uh, kind of the, the process of it all. Awesome, glad to have you today. Um, so after Will goes into some information about how to stake your KSM, I'll give some info on Altair, um, just to round it out. And if you don't know, I'm Cassidy and working at Centrifuge, also the team behind Altair um, hosting this event. So Will, I will pass it to you. You can share your slides or your screen if you want. Cool. Uh, yeah, so... <coughs> um, yeah, basically, uh, just going to first give a little bit of context about um, kind of uh, Kusama, the process of kind of like crowd loans, auctions, uh, parachains, uh, just kind of all of that. And then uh, we'll kind of just go into actually like the, the practical kind of like how to's of actually how to do this. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, my name is Will. I have this funny title called Master Validators at Parity. And yeah, just to touch first on um, Kusama, kind of like what it is, if, if people haven't heard of it before. Um, it's essentially this uh, proof of stake network that's kind of secured by uh, these Kusama validators. And the goal is that it kind of provides the economic security for all these different uh, parachains. And the idea is kind of like um, both this idea of like shared security, but also interoperability. Um, all these kind of parachains will be able to kind of like tap into these other networks that are also on um, Kusama in, in Polkadot. And uh, there's other kind of features there of kind of like bridges to other chains and, and um, also a lot of kind of very powerful kind of like governance uh, kind of primitives there as well. Um, and so just to first kind of touch on like what are parachains, kind of like how this fits into things. Um, as I sort of mentioned, it's like these are these interoperable blockchains that are connected to uh, a relay chain, in this case, uh, Kusama or, or Polkadot. And these parachains inherit like the economic security of this relay chain. Um, and so what that means is kind of like the actual kind of like finalization and kind of like the consensus layer. Um, this actually happens on the, the relay chain itself. And so um, Kusama and, and Polkadot have, as of now, like billion dollar market caps of kind of uh, assets being kind of staked on it. And so all the, the parachains that uh, will get kind of a parachain slot will be able to kind of like inherit that kind of security. Um, but this isn't quite uh, for free uh, in order to actually kind of inherit this kind of both like interoperability and, and shared security, um, all these different teams will need to have kind of a, a parachain slot um, or run as kind of like a parathread. A parathread you could think of as um, kind of like a, a chain that's kind of like waiting to be a, a parachain, um, perhaps at least kind of in the context of uh, today. Uh, in, in the future, what par parathreads uh, will be is kind of like a pay-as-you-go type of chain where um, kind of like the security is kind of like um, a pay per transaction kind of basis. Um, Right now, for all these parachains, uh, they they kind of uh, will be able to like have their own fee structures and be able to um, have their own kind of paradigms for how how you kind of interact with that. Um, and this is just a, a picture that people may or may not have, have not seen, kind of like places that kind of just gives a picture of it. Um, so you have kind of like people that have these these parachain slots and kind of like there's these small little like capsule things that are kind of like the validators and, and whatnot that actually kind of run these things. Um, and so, yeah, this is like a, it seems like a weird, almost like biology kind of diagram, but um, yeah, like kind of there's multiple different ways of actually uh, participating in kind of like the Kusama network. And it, this, is, this is, I guess, from the perspective of like someone that holds uh, KSM, um, they can actually do like kind of multiple different things with it, although some of them not necessarily at the same time. Um, so kind of, I would, categorize this in like the first two buckets of kind of like governance and staking. 
Um, and so, as I kind of mentioned before, uh, Kusama and Polkadot have these kind of like multi-tiered governance systems that uh, decide like what runtime upgrades look like, what actual kind of like upgrades on the, the chain itself, like the business logic, uh, what, what actually kind of happens there, but also things like how to spend the treasury, um, how to like elect people that, that kind of also will kind of make decisions in the chain. Um, in those kinds of, of decisions. Cause just because it's like literally like any kind of parameter is kind of like configurable by governance. It's like a very kind of flexible system. And so being able to actually uh, decide and organize together of how to do those things is a is a kind of complex process there. And so um, that's kind of one one way of actually kind of participating is just uh, voting on things, backing council members, um, things like that. Um, but the other that I think is uh, what a lot of people uh, kind of like have been doing or, or kind of they currently do is actually staking. And so in the context of kind of like Kusama in, in the relay chain, um, this is either like running a validator yourself or, or nominating other validators. Um, and so I would say like this is kind of what, what's, uh, what most people might do right now with their, their KSM, um, at least it, just because like parachains are, are still kind of in the process of launching here. Uh, but now that this is kind of happening a lot more, a lot more kind of parachains are actually um, trying to bid for, for slots and whatnot. Um, the next kind of big interesting thing is actually kind of like bidding for uh, parachain slot leases. And uh, for a parachain team, if they actually have like enough KSM themselves, they could they don't have to go through this kind of crowd loan process. But um, for teams that may not or, or may kind of want to uh, kind of better incentivize the, the community, um, a, a new kind of primitive here is actually kind of like contributing to crowd loans. And I'll kind of describe crowd, crowd loans a little bit more um, in, in a second. Uh, but just to kind of uh, touch on uh, staking stuff a little bit more, um, as I mentioned, it's kind of like running validators or nominating other validators. And this is contributing kind of like the shared security that all these parachains inherit. And uh, generally kind of like there's um, this like two-sided thing of actually like why people want to kind of um, participate. Uh, one is that you kind of like get rewards via inflation and generally um, it's like there's an upper limit of kind of like 10% inflation for the network, but um, the actual kind of rewards that uh, people can get via staking uh, on Kusama um, can be uh, kind of variable depending on a couple different factors. Uh, but kind of like the, the flip side of this though is that there's kind of this like slashing risk. And so um, if you're running a validator yourself or if you kind of back people that may or may not be as kind of like trustworthy, um, say they kind of like mess up with their their keys of the way that their setup is and that kind of thing, uh, you can actually kind of like lose money. And so um, it's kind of like, uh, I would categorize it a little bit more as almost like higher risk, uh, higher reward type um, situation there. Um, and the other kind of uh, aspect of this is that uh, kind of once you actually kind of stake, if you want to unstake, there is a seven day unbonding period. So it's, it's you can't transfer things kind of immediately if you want to kind of like stop staking, uh, which uh, kind of like from a protocol level uh, has certain kind of like guarantees for uh, why that's that's in place there. Um, the other thing that people can also do, as I mentioned, is kind of the governance. And kind of like from a user perspective, um, actually participating in this uh, also will have some types of like lockups from like a protocol level. And so um, say, for example, you want to back like a council member, say there's um, a person that you think is like really well suited for kind of deciding like where treasury funds go to. Um, generally, it's kind of like you, you will have like a lock placed on your account that it's removed once you kind of like stop voting for them, which is kind of like you can do immediately. But if you have this kind of like lock on there, you can't either um, transfer or um, participate in, in certain things. And I'll kind of get into that also in a little bit. But um, the other um, part of this is that there's a lot of kind of like on-chain activity that you could vote for. Um, so for example, it's like um, increasing the amount of validators that can participate on-chain or um, there's like literally like any kind of um, parameter you could actually change via governance. And so people will either like propose these or, or vote on them. And depending on like how you actually kind of like vote for it, um, this can also kind of like lock up um, funds uh, for like a certain period of time. And so, for example, it's like kind of this context of uh, what like conviction is. So it, uh, you could have like six x conviction, for example, which means like your weight, your, like your vote will be weighted for your balance times like six, but it's like locked for um, six times as long. Um, you could vote for things at like a zero point one percent or like zero point one x commission or conviction. And that has like no lockup, but um, anything that's kind of like greater than uh, one will have like a certain time period that like your funds are kind of locked for a, a period of time. And so um, once there's kind of like a lock on that, you can't um, transfer things out. You can still participate in, in um, some things, but 
crowd loans, for example, are not something that you could participate in if there's kind of like locks in 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 some of those those contexts. Uh, and so this is just a, a very uh, broad picture of like what some of this like governance stuff looks like. Uh, I won't really get it too deep into this, um, but um, yeah, the main thing I kind of want to talk about today is like parachain auctions, uh, crowd loans, actually kind of like participating in. Um, things like that, just because it's, as I mentioned at the start of this, it's like a pretty exciting time. Um, this next round of auctions starts as of like today, literally. And so uh, seeing all these teams actually kind of participate and uh, seeing who might win is uh, is quite exciting. Um, so just to describe kind of like what these are, how this works, um, generally kind of what teams will do is kind of like bid on kind of like lease slots. And so um, each like lease period is uh, six weeks for Kusama. And this like auction is uh, eight lease periods. So it's like six weeks times eight is 48 weeks or so. Um, and so but these parachains will kind of bid for a slot with either their own KSM or uh, kind of incentivized uh, people that are just holding, holding KSM via this kind of like crowd loan functionality. Um, and no matter kind of like what route that, that they go, um, by the end of these like lease periods, all the KSM is returned. Uh, and, and so the goal is just to actually kind of like lock up a certain amount of KSM um, just to um, have some kind of like guarantees of uh, who could actually have like lease slots here just because uh, if you think about kind of the way that like blockchains and, and parachains and stuff work, um, actually being able to, to um, have like throughput and have kind of um, the ability to, to have communication between like a large amount of like different chains and, and teams and stuff like that, it's, it's somewhat of like a finite resource and um, it's kind of like an opportunity cost uh, to be able to kind of like participate in that. And so that's kind of like what, what the reason of actually kind of like locking things up there is. Um, this is a very kind of like brief explanation of the, the, what this looks like in terms of kind of like dates. So as I mentioned um, today, uh, this actually started, I think like two or so hours ago. Um, the first, or well, this is like the um, the sixth like external parachain uh, to to launch. Um, there's actually currently now six parachains on Kusama, including like State Mine, which is this like common good parachain. And so, what teams will be bidding on is the um, seventh uh, parachain slot. And uh, there will be a new parachain like each week that will onboard. And each kind of week, there will be um, a, a parachain team that will win the the next slot there. And so uh, this is kind of what this might look like, kind of like uh, sequentially. So uh, these slot durations, um, these are like some of just like the, the dates that some of them will like end on. So for example, the first five slot auctions have already happened. Um, the first of those will end in May 13th of uh, next year. And so this, for this current one that is, is bidding that ends kind of like next week, uh, this will end August 5th of, um, of next year. Um, and the way that these these auctions actually kind of work is kind of like this uh, candlestick auction of sorts. And so um, what this means is that like if you compare this to say uh, if people have like participated in like eBay auctions or something like that before, um, the way that those kind of work is that usually like someone will just bid up the uh, highest amount at like the very last minute and just kind of like snipe whatever it is. Um, this is has some kind of like features in this that actually help kind of prevent that type of behavior and have it be like a little bit more fair in the sense of um, people will try and uh, more accurately kind of like have a, a uh, auction kind of like state prior to like the actual end of it. And so there's kind of like this like starting period of which um, th throughout all of this, this is like a seven day period in the context of Kusama, uh, people can place um, new like crowd loan uh, bids and uh, the actual teams get like the parachain teams can place like auction bids. Um, but like the time period by which the uh, the auction winner is actually decided is kind of like in this this ending period window. Um, and, and so this is kind of like uh, two days after it starts. It's kind of like this like five day period by which uh, there's kind of this this redness factor that is determined actually after the seven days to decide like, OK, which time like time period within this five day window was like the the time that we should actually take like a snapshot there. Um, and, and so uh, teams like like people that are contributing to these crowd loans can still contribute to it like for this like entire like um, week per auction uh, at least. And so it's um, it's just by the end of that is like the actual winner kind of determined. Um, and so 
for the context of like crowd loans, and this is more so for people that are actually kind of like participating in this, um, generally kind of what this means is kind of like um, people in the community will like lock up their KSM in order to um, help these parachain teams actually secure this, this parachain slot. And so um, going back to like this here, it's kind of like uh, each, each round of this, um, the highest amount of, of uh, kind of total bids in, in this auction is the, the, the team that wins, but it's kind of like the time period where that snapshot is taking is kind of within this like period that's, that's kind of done with randomness. And so the reason why people would want to kind of um, lock up their KSM for this uh, generally, and this will depend on each kind of parachain, but generally um, users will kind of get these native parachain tokens as rewards for it um, or other incentives. And so what this means is that like a lot of these parachains will launch with their own tokens. And this is kind of like a way to actually like distribute this. And uh, I think this is actually like a really cool way of like the evolution of um, a lot of like blockchain things just in the sense of like, go back to like 2016, 2017, you had like these like ICOs and, and stuff like that, where you literally just like give people money in exchange for the tokens. Um, now this is kind of like just a different like distribution uh, mechanism by which people can actually like uh, get tokens in this, this kind of like way that's fairly like riskless. It's like people will get their KSM back at the end of these, these periods. Um, but in the meantime, they can like get these, these tokens. And from the perspective of like these parachain teams, um, this is actually like a really interesting way to actually like distribute things to a wide amount of people just so that it's not like in the hands of a few VCs or, or, or stuff like that. Um, and so as I kind of mentioned, uh, this, this KSM that people contribute is like locked uh, until the, the end of the lease period. So um, for most of these teams bidding in this, this next block, that's like 48 weeks and people will get that uh, KSM back afterwards to be able to like transfer it or stake or whatever they want to do with it. Um, but kind of the caveat there is that like people that contribute to crowd loans, um, they can't also participate in like staking on Kusama or um, democracy just because um, these are kind of like opportunity costs. And um, just in the context of like people that are like staking on Kusama, for example, there's like slashing risk and, and stuff like that. And so um, you don't want to have this kind of situation where like you have your, your KSM like slashed or uh, otherwise, while also being locked in kind of like this this parachain lease slot. So there's there's a couple different reasons for that. Um, and so just actually onto like the practical uh, kind of steps of participating in these, these crowd loans, um, it's actually like quite easy. Uh, it's, it's it's kind of two steps. Like these these steps might have some sub steps depending on uh, where you currently are. If you already have like an account with KSM in it, if you're already like staking, if you already have some stuff participating in governance, but um, the actual like process of contributing to these these crowd loans is um, quite quite easy. So um, generally, it's like you would either have an account or you uh, kind of create a new one. Um, for most of these, it's a lot better to use like this Polkadot.js extension, just because um, some of these uh, teams can like build their own UIs for these things. Some have kind of like referral programs. Some have uh, just like external ways of like benefits that might. And like happen for that and generally to be able to um, use these kind of like um, interfaces that people have built using the extension is, is like a good good way of doing that and uh, kind of like from a protocol level uh, the minimum amount is like 0.1 ksm that's kind of like the the lowest that you um, can actually contribute to these and as i mentioned before um, this, this ksm that people own can't like currently already be locked in either staking or, or governance um, but if it currently if it currently is, there's kind of ways to um, unset that and then participate in in these crowd loans. Um, so if, if you're kind of like doing this process of setting up a new account, and um, I'm actually going to kind of walk through this this step by step um, afterwards, but it's generally kind of like if you don't already have it, you'll install the Polkadot.js extension, uh, you'll create a new account, and just kind of the process of actually uh, working with uh, Custodying your own funds with like crypto and stuff. It's kind of like you want to save your seed phrase on paper and like never share that with people. Um, I'm going to like share what on, on, on screen here in a little bit, but uh, don't do that. That's not really good to do. Um, generally, it's like when you create these accounts, um, you'll kind of create a password as well. And this will both kind of like encrypt a JSON file that uh, you can save and kind of like back up. And so uh, this, this password should be something that's both like memorable and secure. It's like something that's probably not easily guessable, something that follows just good password practices and that kind of thing. And lastly, once you actually just have an account, you would transfer KSM into it uh, just to have um, some that you could actually utilize. 
the process of if you have like an existing account, and this is only if you've already kind of been participating in things um, from the staking side, uh, you want to kind of like stop staking. And so from on Polkadot.js, there's, there's like count action page that you hit like stop. Uh, but once you actually kind of just hit stop, uh, your funds still aren't like usable quite just yet. Um, after like you kind of stop staking, you would want to unbond them. And this is kind of the seven day period that I mentioned before. And uh, even after the seven day period, it's still a little bit annoying in that they're not transferable yet. You have to just submit another transaction to actually like withdraw these unbonded funds. Um, and so also then in the, the context of governance, um, if you're voting currently for council members, uh, you would just kind of like unvote for them. Um, there's some options in some some UIs in, in places that are just like essentially saying just like stop backing people that you're currently backing. And if that's the only thing that you're doing, then uh, your funds should be immediately kind of transferable. Um, but if you've kind of participated in like some democracy proposals where you've participated with like conviction that's like not like 0.1 X or, or whatever, then uh, you might have to wait until whatever kind of um, time period that the, the lock will kind of expire there. And so for both like staking and governance, the locks there can be like overlapping. It's like you could have both staking locks and governance locks, um, but you can't have both like crowd loan locks and either staking or governance locks, which is mildly confusing. But um, both of these are kind of just like the steps that you would kind of take to, to do that if you've already kind of been participating in some of these. And so uh, lastly, like once you actually have your account um, set up, there's just a couple different kind of uh, things to mention of actually participating in these crowd loans. And that's that your, your KSM can only go to like one crowd loan at a time. Um, so for example, if you have like um, 10 KSM or something like that, and uh, you contribute 10 KSM to like one parachain, you can't also contribute that to like another parachain. Um, but you can contribute like five uh, to, to one parachain and then five to another. Uh, they can only kind of like go to one at a time. And uh, also it's like each kind of like parachain, each team is like kind of come up with like different incentives and different ways or reasons in, in ways of actually like having why you should participate in these. And I would say kind of like do your own research into to some of these. Um, I think Cassidy might be able to ex explain kind of like what Altair's kind of approach is, is here. But um, generally, it's like not not all of them are the same, and so uh, generally, just kind of like should look into some of these before you actually kind of um, participate. Um, as mentioned before, kind of uh, the actual kind of like crowdload process will lock the KSM for the least duration, uh, and it cannot be transferred. It can also not be used in staking or governance until it's kind of like unlocked at the end period of the, the least duration, um, and then. Uh, basically, the, the what process and way that you're actually kind of contribute to these these are either kind of from this like Polkadot.js apps page, which I'll kind of like go through in a second, um, or or some of these teams have kind of made their own UIs for actually how to to participate there. Um, lastly, I would say like the reason why this is kind of like a low risk uh, kind of uh, thing is just because you're actually participating in this functionality through like the on-chain protocol of this like crowd load module, which is like a substrate thing. Um, some teams have like done weird things before of like you would transfer like funds to them, which is like not something that you should do. It's, that can be like a red flag depending on what what team what the team is actually kind of doing. And so I would say for like the majority of them, it's like you would actually participate through this through kind of like contributing through this crowd load thing. But if um, someone is like asking you to like transfer them stuff directly, it's like should maybe take a step back and, and check that out just because that generally is a little bit of a red flag there. Um, so yeah, now uh, we'll just kind of go through like the process of actually um, doing this like kind of um, practically. And um, generally it's like, I would say this is like a, this like two-step thing, as I mentioned before, is actually kind of like setting up an account uh, and then actually doing the, the crowd loan um, kind of transactions and whatnot. And so um, this is starting essentially from scratch here. So um, the first thing that if, that I would do if like no people have kind of like no contacts whatsoever is just go to polkadot.js.org. Um, this is kind of like the uh, portal to actually utilize both like Kusama, but also a lot of these different pair chains themselves. So the first thing uh, to do would be uh, kind of click on this like extension uh, kind of portion here. And this is actually to install the extension itself, either with like Chrome or Firefox. Um, because I'm using Chrome at the moment, going to, um, install this here. 
uh, adding this to, to Chrome. And so, um, yeah, this has just been, been added here. I'm just going to pin this so it kind of shows up. Um, so then this will kind of just show you some kind of warning and stuff. You would click like, okay, let me continue. And so from here, you could actually kind of like create accounts and be able to like utilize this. Um, this is somewhat similar to MetaMask uh, in the Ethereum context that people have used that before. But um, if you haven't kind of used this before <clears throat> whatsoever, uh, the first step would actually be kind of like creating an account. Um, so you would just kind of like click on this, this thing here. Um, so as, as I mentioned before, it's like if you're actually doing this yourself, um, don't like screen share stuff and don't like share this like demonic seed because if people have access to this, they have access to all your funds. And that's generally not not chill. So um, and actually like creating um, an account here and in, in walking through this process, um, generally it's like you would write this down on paper. You would save this and kind of store it. Uh, somewhere that you have access to, maybe in like a, a bank safe or something like that, um, just backing it up somehow. And then you go through this next process, you kind of maybe give it some name, like, I don't know, like crowd loan or whatever you want to kind of like name your, your account. And then um, you would then kind of like add in a password. Um, this password is uh, kind of like twofold. One is when you actually assign transactions from this interface in the UI. Um, this will kind of prompt you for this just because like the actual way that it's stored is kind of like encrypted. And then also if you kind of like export this later, um, you could get this like JSON file that's uh, kind of password in encrypted as well. Um, and so once you actually kind of like do this, um, you also might want to select like um, allow to use on like a specific chain. In this context, it would be Kusama. And so um, just like, just because like the actual representation of the address is this like, SS58 encoding, and it, it will differ depending on kind of which chain you're actually using. Uh, most things will be able to use the same depending on like which um, kind of like representation it is and different like UIs will be able to still use it. And it's still like the same private key, but it's just kind of like different uh, visual representations of the, the thing depending on different chains like SS58 encoding. And so once you actually do this, um, it will add in this account into the extension here and you can actually start to be able to, to use this. Um, so the next step would be actually going to this like um, apps wallet page. So this is kind of like this portal for actually utilize, like using and um, utilizing any of these different, different chains. Um, sometimes this can take a second to like load depending on kind of things just because there's a lot of things that, that load when you kind of query stuff. Um, and this thing also kind of popped up when I first uh, went here just because this is like a new Chrome prof profile and I, I haven't used this before yet. But so you would um, kind of allow access to um, the site that you're currently using. And so this is polkadot.js.apps and, and whatnot. Uh, it'll first kind of go to like Polkadot, which um, if you just kind of like click on the the uh, like logo thing up here, this will give you just the different networks that you can actually connect to. Um, in this case, we want to go to um, Kusama, but um, also this is like the interface to interact with all these different chains as well. Uh, so if you want to interact with like Altair or something like that, you would kind of like click on that to be able to um, use their chain. But uh, first, just going to switch to um, the Kusama chain here just to be able to kind of like interact with it and whatnot. Um, and so like the first thing that you'll see is this kind of like UI of a bunch of blocks and a bunch of information that for like most people is not really important too much. Uh, what's a little bit more interesting is this like accounts page. So when I just created this um, new account here, like a second ago in the extension, um, this also just automatically kind of like adds it into this accounts page and this will have this like extension uh, kind of like prefix there. Um, and so this is like generally the point where you would actually like transfer in KSM, maybe from an exchange or if you already have some elsewhere, um, that kind of thing. Um, I have like another account that I already kind of added some KSM to. And so I'm just going to like import that from like the file that I have saved here. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to add this. There's already kind of like a, a password for it. And so you would enter the password, and then this will add in this, this account that I just had here as well. So going, going back to this like polkadot.js page, uh, if I refresh this, I think this should be able to show up here. Um, and so this is the account that I just added. It has uh, a little over one KSM in it. 
And so then in order to actually like participate in these crowd loans, uh, where this stuff is located is like this like network tab and then in this um, pair chains tab here. And so this first page that it'll kind of like go to is just this like overview page that will currently list like the current pair chains that are like live on Kusama at the moment. And so this is both like state mine, which is kind of like this common good pair chain. And they're like the first five winners of the, the last round of auctions. Um, if you go to this crowd loan tab, uh, this will just show all of the current crowd loans that are um, happening on, on the network. So uh, there's kind of a couple things to note is one of them is uh, like just the amount that they've kind of raised. So uh, right now, as of um, today, actually, like this, this auction is, is currently happening. And so um, as of like right now, uh, Kilt is one of the teams that has, I guess, the, the most kind of actually backed towards them. But every, every week, this will um, change for uh, the, the slot, depending on who it is. And each each kind of week, it's like whoever has the most uh, total raised will will win the auction, so long as it's like within a snapshot of sorts. Um, on like the far right side of this, uh, there's kind of this like contribute button, which I'll, I'll kind of click on in, in a sec. But it, there's also kind of like a homepage that teams have kind of like listed there. So it's like if you go to like Altair, for example, it'll kind of just go to just a little bit more information. Um, all these different pair chains will generally have kind of like some context of. Uh, what their chain is doing, like why you should kind of participate, um, things along those lines. Um, but if you actually just want to back one of these in the, the process, you would just hit um, contribute. Um, it's actually like pretty easy. You just have to submit this like transaction. Uh, as I mentioned, kind of the minimum amount that you would kind of contribute is like 0 0.1. Um, some of this stuff is, isn't quite as important, but like you essentially just pick whatever account that you want to contribute from, and then you would uh, specify the contribution amount. And so in this case, I'm going to contribute like 0.1 KSM uh, to this, this crowd loan. Uh, you hit contribute, uh, you then hit like sign and submit, which will then kind of like have this um, pop-up that, that comes up on, on the other screen here. And this is just showing you the actual like data of uh, what the the transaction kind of like entails so um as i mentioned before there's kind of this um this password that you have to input that you've, you've set earlier um if you sign and submit this this will actually like broadcast this to the network and once this actually kind of like gets included in a block uh then you've successfully contributed to this this crowd loan and so you can see it's like your contribution uh, here is that I contributed like 0 0.1 KSM. Um, so this is kind of like the general process of actually doing this through um, Polkadot.js, but uh, I also mentioned before that some of these other teams have kind of uh, built other UIs and other things for kind of contributing as well. And so for example, um, like Altair also kind of built a, a kind of site for this and that kind of thing. Uh, just because I have this open and I installed the extension and haven't refreshed this yet, like you might have to refresh it. Um, and so once I did, there's this kind of thing that popped up that says like, do you wanna um, allow access to this site and kind of do that. And then um, this will show you uh, the accounts that you have that are imported into the extension. So right now, as I did earlier, I have like two accounts. You could choose which one that you want. Um, this is the one that I have KSUdmin. And so if you want to kind of uh, also contribute um, whatever amount uh, here, uh, you could kind of see whatever estimated amount of uh, tokens that you would get uh, if the if the parachain wins one of the slots. Um, hit agree, and this will also uh, kind of like prompt a transaction. Um, this is pretty much the same exact thing that I also just signed uh, a few minutes before. So you would sign this, and um, this will kind of create the transaction, broadcast this to the network, and uh, at, at some point it should get into a block and whatnot. Um, but yeah, generally this is like the entire process. Once you actually have like an account set up and whatnot, it's it's quite easy. You just kind of um, submit like a single transaction um, and the actual like transaction is uh, quite, quite easy. Um, so if anyone wants some referral, you can use this, but. Um, yeah, that's generally it. Uh, then hand this back over to 
Cassidy to maybe go through some more context of what um, Altair is doing. Awesome. Thank you, Will. Thanks for that small little contribution to the Altair crowd room. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess um, I wonder if anyone had a question right away that they wanted to drop in the chat. Otherwise, I will jump into Altair. OK, I don't see any questions quite yet. Um, so I will just jump in. OK. Can you give me a thumbs up if you if you see the screen, all right? Looks good. Cool. All right. So um, yeah, we'll just covered how to stake your KSM um, quite thoroughly. So that was really great. Um, now I'm going to jump into Altair um, and just how exciting we think it is um, and how it adds to the Kusama ecosystem. Um, so I guess just jumping in there, what is Altair? So um, Altair is built by our team at Centrifuge. Um, it's Centrifuge already exists today. It's a platform to finance real world assets. And Altair will basically be um, like the little brother to Centrifuge. And um, what that means is that the newest, most experimental features are going to go live on Altair before they go live on Centrifuge chain. Um, so Altair will continue to exist alongside Centrifuge um, uh, for as long as, as they can together. Um, and really the use case for Altair is going to be a lot more on that sort of bleeding edge um, of asset financing. So anything from like art NFTs to different types of undiscovered assets even. Um, Altair will enable users to tokenize those assets and access financing for them. Um, so I think for me, like to bring it to a more concrete use case, um, something that I find the most exciting would be what if you could get liquidity for your crypto punks? Um, I, I think Altair can really start this art financing revolution. Um, so it's Altair will be really flexible enough um, and the structure will actually allow something say like a CryptoPunk DAO um, and the CryptoPunk owners can pull their NFTs into a pool on Altair and on the other side investors could finance this pool um, to give stakeholders in the DAO liquidity for those CryptoPunks in different types of um, stable tokens, maybe even, for example, the career dollar. Um, so I think for me, this is probably the most exciting reason to contribute to the Altair crowd loan is to realize this sort of use case. Um, I think this will really help Kusama as an ecosystem push uh, the limits of what DeFi can look like. Um, so today, uh, Centrifuge chain is already live. We have our DAP10 link that's live on Ethereum with over 30 million in total value locked. Um, and our CFG token that's live on Centrifuge chain, that's a standalone substrate chain, um, that's a liquidity reward if you're providing liquidity to these different pools. And this 10 link DAP that you see here is also going to go live on Altair. So that will be the first big push. Um, after the Altair launch, we'll be moving Tinlink from Ethereum, where it exists now, like you see it here, um, over to Altair first, and then eventually over to Centrifuge Chain. Um, I think for me, the most exciting part about moving Tinlink over is the interoperability that we can get with different projects in this ecosystem. Um, so I think. That's really the killer feature for me of pair chains, um, pair chains on Kusama and also on Polkadot, is that you really are able to get integrations 
much easier with different projects in the ecosystem. Um, so some of the integrations that we're most excited about are things like uh, finding financing assets with the career dollar, like I mentioned for Altair, or with the Akala dollar uh, for Centrifuge chain. Um, integrating with different Solidity-based apps on Moonbeam, um, financing some cool art NFTs, uh, maybe with something like Remark, um, and providing real-world verification for assets using something like Kilt. Um, so this is just a few different examples of how we can integrate with different parachain projects going forward, um, or different Kusama ecosystem projects. And I think that's really where we can push um, innovation in the whole blockchain ecosystem together with Kusama and Parachains. Um, so the Altair crowd loan is open. Um, there are a few different ways that you can contribute. So Will uh, really dove into how you can contribute directly on the Kusama portal. Um, also showed you how to contribute directly on the Altair website. Um, another way that you could choose to contribute is uh, through an exchange um, like uh, Kraken or KuCoin uh, or through a wallet like the Fearless Wallet. Um, and then once Altair is launched, uh, you can either claim the air tokens directly on chain on Altair if you are contributing directly through the Kusama portal or through the Altair website. Um, or if you contribute through an exchange, you can claim that on the exchange itself. Um, and so the reward for contributing one KSM to the Altair crowd loan is 400 air. Um, but we also have some bonuses for you. So you can earn um, that 400 air per one KSM is like the, the base. Um, but then early birds are also earning an extra 10%. And we extended that yesterday um, to be the first 72 hours. Um, so not 48 hours. So that will end um, tomorrow, Thursday at 12 p.m. UTC. Um, there's also a referral bonus that you saw pop up when we um, did that little demo. Um, so you can earn a 5% bonus if you share that referral code for both you and a friend. Um, and then heavyweights, if you contribute more than 10 KSM, we'll get something extra special. And that announcement is coming, so stay tuned. Um, and just a, a side note, um, if you were one of the 250 first participants in the first round of auctions, you will still get your bonus if you contribute um, during this round. And if you stake your KSM to the Altair crowd loan and you stake your DOT to the Centrifuge crowd loan, we will have a bonus for you um, later on once Centrifuge actually launches the parachain. So stay tuned for that. Um, and just to note, 25% of the rewards um, here that I've mentioned will be liquid to crowd loan participants, and the remaining will best over the length of the whole parachain slot. And we're going for the full 48 weeks. Um, I can drop a link to this rewards post in the comments um, if you want to find out more information. Um, here's just an overview of the AIR token distribution. So the um, crowd loan participants, we've reserved 18% of the network for. Um, so I think our main goal here is really to get the air token into the hands of the Kusama ecosystem. And so we've devoted quite a bit of the percentage of uh, the air token to crowd loan participants. Um, so I will leave it there for any of your questions. Oh, thanks, Helena, for dropping those links. Um, let's see. If I can find any questions here. When will the parachain auctions for Polkadot start after the slots on Kusama have been booked? Um, so so uh, <coughs> I answered this in the comment there, which to explain maybe a little bit more. Um, it's kind of like two main things at this point. One is this like disputes sub protocol that's related to like parachain consensus and whatnot, which um, this is kind of just like the last uh, feature complete implementation thing for kind of the parachain code to actually get in. And this is done. It was actually like added to Kusama, I think maybe like 
uh, three or four weeks ago, it kind of broke Kusama for a little bit. And so we made a new release that removed it for the time being. And so it's just like the process of integrating it, which should be, I would say, in the next like release, which should be uh, next week, the week after, sometime like that. Um, and then just kind of making sure Kusama doesn't break, but Kusama is also kind of meant to break. So we'll kind of see see how that kind of works there. Um, the other kind of process is the uh, kind of like full code base audit. And um, there's kind of two parts to this. One is kind of like the parachain code, which um, has actually already been audited like twice already. Um, and then it's kind of like the, the client code, which is like pretty much everything else. And so um, this audit started um, kind of a while ago, but it's just actually kind of uh, finishing this up, addressing any kind of potential uh, kind of things that, that people find and uh, kind of going from there. Um, I would say it's like the actual kind of like thing of, of parachains is pretty like the tech is already there. It's like it's already working on Kusama. Um, but the uh, reason why this hasn't launched on Polkadot yet is just kind of like ensuring um, stability, ensuring kind of the uh, code base is um, kind of as kind of like high quality as it could be. Um, just because it's like Kusama is supposed to be um, experimental. It, it's kind of like supposed to break. Um, Polkadot differs in the sense of uh, teams that want to deploy there and um, the actual kind of like ethos of it is supposed to be like slower moving, um, stable, um, that kind of thing. And so uh, I would say it's like very close to uh, actually both of those things kind of being completed. Um, not sure that I could give any kind of specific dates or anything, but it's like soon TM. <laughs> nice. Thanks for that answer, Will. Um... And just by the way, this video is being recorded, um, so we'll make it available to you um, after uh, after this is over. Um, Helena also posted a FAQ doc on the crowd loan um, if you have more questions that you need answers answered, and the blog post about uh, the bonuses for Altair. Um, I see one question in the chat. Um, so the question is whether Altair will go for another crowd loan after this 48 week slot um, and will it be self-funded or a hybrid approach? Um, so Altair is intended to run as a parachain on Kusama long-term. Ultimately, whether it goes for a slot after this 48 week slot, if, if it does uh, win a slot this, this round, um, will be left to governance of the air token holders. Um, it will probably be some form of a hybrid. So using the Altair treasury on chain um, to probably acquire some KSM, though that would be um, also a decision left to governance. I think going for that hybrid approach probably makes sense long-term, um, but for the beginning, uh, going for the pure crowd loan to start off with. Cool. I will leave it there. Um, thank you for joining us, Will, and diving into how to stake your KSM. I think that was super helpful. Yeah. And thank you, everyone else, for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye. All right, cheers.